It's been an incredible journey. I feel like we never quite, uh, it never quite ended. It just felt continuous from the first film into our journey through the Oscars and then straight into prep. Timothy is hands down one of the best actors of his generation and he really um, completely inhabits the character now who has been, um, had this leadership role thrust upon him and he becomes, he becomes everything that he has the potential of in the first film. Um, we see him wrestling with what destiny his mother and the Benny Gesserit have for him. And Timothy does a beautiful job of, I think, humanizing all of that intensity and complexity. And you really feel him wrestling with it in a way that I think is very relatable. Although certainly none of us um, necessarily have those powers or abilities, I think we can all relate to uh, trying to be the best version of ourselves and again, who we want to be versus what the world wants us to be. Zendaya is such a multifaceted, talented actress. She's arguably one of the best of her generation. She brings a vulnerability as well as a strength. Chani is uh, a warrior unlike anyone else. You see her on the front lines. She is, at the same time, very much the heart and soul for Paul and puts Paul through his paces in terms of really um, earning her love. Rebecca's brought an incredible intensity to Lady Jessica. This is the culmination of everything that, that Lady Jessica has been uh, raised to do as a Bene Gesserit. This is the ultimate for her. This is the ultimate mission. She believes deeply that Paul is the Kwisak Haderach and she will stop at nothing to make sure that he fulfills that destiny. Fade is the nephew of the Baron, played by the, I will say it again, one of the very best actors of his generation, Austin Butler. The character is psychotic. He truly takes pleasure in, in killing. He is a master, master swordsman. Uh, we see him for the first time in the, uh, in the gladiator pit. And for him, the ultimate power is to get Arrakis, and he is given this gift by his uncle, who also believes that perhaps he's the only person who can ultimately bring victory and control. Leah Seydoux, an incredible actress, it plays Lady Fenring. She's a Bene Gesserit who has a very specific mission and is probably one of the only Bene Gesserit who could actually come in and figure out how to, how to control and bring Fade into what becomes the ultimate um, power play for the Bene Gesserit. Because as we know, they don't really pick sides. It's all about the bigger chess game. And so for them, Fade Rotha becomes the one who they believe can carry through what is their ultimate agenda. One of my favorite moments in the film is when Gurney and Paul are reunited. It's a surprise, it's unexpected, it's incredibly emotional. We left it, um, it, it was unknown what happened to Gurney in the first film. And for Paul, the, the loss that he believed, you know, between losing his father, Duncan Idaho, Gurney, he believes, is dead. And so this moment that they find each other, which again feels like destiny, is a, a huge turning point in the film. And right at the moment that Paul is wrestling with what he's going to do with his power. Josh is, he's incredible. It's, it's hard to imagine this film without him and just his energy and his commitment and he brings a lot of humor to the film. And Gurney is such a, um, such a true and loyal uh, character that it's impossible not to root for him. 
it's hard to imagine anybody else directing this movie. This film works or needs to work on so many different levels, both on an intimate character level as well as on a giant epic um, made for the big screen. We shot the entire film in IMAX. And I think there's very few filmmakers who are able to work on both levels as effortlessly as, as Denis is able to. And he's a master world builder. And he, he has a way of making a world that is very foreign feel incredibly relatable and very real. So much of that is done um, in camera, uh, which is very important to Denis and the level of detail, whether it's you know the costumes, uh, the set design, all of, all of those details coming together to, to form something that feels organic and real. So the film does not feel off-putting in any way. Denis done a beautiful job of, in some ways, um, melding genres. And what I mean by that is the film is very much a gritty war film while at the same time an epic adventure film, while at the same time an intense uh, Shakespearean power play uh, film, a love story. Um, the emotionality and the intensity of the film is incredible. And he, he blends it so beautifully together. You know, it's hard enough to do one well, but he's, he's, he's told them in always from the perspective of character first, but they're beautifully intertwined. There's only one Hans Zimmer, deservedly so. Hans, I believe, this is setting the bar high, has outdone himself. He has created new instruments, new sounds, yet at the same time, everything feels as if it's, it's old while being new. The love theme, the first time I heard it, it's never left me. It, 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 his music penetrates your soul in ways that is hard to describe. And I think that Hans understands, he's, he's a big Dune fan, but he deeply understands how intimate the film is on one level and how epic it is on another level. And I think he's done an incredible job reflecting that in the music. I very much believe it starts from the top down, so that is Denis and the tone that he that he establishes on set.